Um, I am so delighted and honored to be at this wonderful museum, and I first must thank my colleague Alejandro Vergara and uh, Paloma Malaga Shaw for the chance to uh, be able to speak about the work of Sai Guo Chong here at the, um, at the Prado. I also must thank Sai himself. Um, as you know, he's an artist who is known worldwide. Quali? He's an artist who is known uh, worldwide, and in fact, he has done projects um, at the Museum of Modern Art. But I had never met him. I first met him at a conference that he organized on contemporary painting. It was a conference not to discuss the cliche of painting's death in these times, felled by the moving image and subsequently by media, but to discuss its eternal life as an activity that expresses the very lifeblood of us as human beings. For Sai, painting is a universal phenomenon, elemental like earth, water, air, and fire. Being at the Prado, I can feel Sai's excitement to work here, among works that helped prove this vision. The works that he created for this show, and I hope all of you have seen it because it's a wonderful one, do not so much compete with the masters here, but shine a light on them. And it is light about which I want to talk today to you. Sai Guochang's story is one about light in the form of illumination and in the form of fire as a metaphor and also as an actuality, as an inspiration, but also as an art-making tool. Sai is best known as an artist who creates artworks out of fire, specifically gunpowder explosives, or more simply, fireworks. His enormous public displays created worldwide, and this is a fantastic one that happened at the Philadelphia Museum, they are carefully choreographed, but they still offer the thrill of violent explosion and the catharsis of smoke, flames, and blasting light. Working with this material, Sai is a part of a very critical and important tradition. Fireworks are a Chinese invention that some, that some say dates back to 200 BC. Others date the development of fireworks to the Tang Dynasty in the seventh century. Whichever date is correct, working with pyrotechnics has a venerable tradition in China. A pyrotechnician who must have creative, scientific, and engineering skills was and still is considered in China to be a respected and challenging career, equal to that of literature or fine arts. Sai was born in 1957 in Fujian province. He is the son of an artist, and he came of age at the exact final period of the Cultural Revolution, and he was formed by its violence and its fires. Just to remind you, the Cultural Revolution began um, in 1966, spurred by Mao Zedong, and ended in 1976 with Mao's uh, death. It was a countrywide purge of all traces of bourgeois values. Uh, populations were relocated, individuals were jailed, displaced, and even killed. Lives were ransacked. Here I'm showing you a shot of the 1966 push to destroy the four olds, which were customs, cultures, habits, and ideas. This, of course, led to the destruction of historic sites, artifacts, art, and libraries. But the youth orientation and the camaraderie were invigorating to Sai, who was 19 at the end of the Cultural Revolution. As Mao's little red book exhorted, and you can see they're, they're holding the, that up, the future belonged to the young, and Sai was one of them. The intensely social experience of group activity, of creating a spectacle, and of experiencing spectacle made an enormous positive impression on the artist as did the very idea 
that culture could be created communally. Now, this is a work called uh, Sky Ladder. It's one of his very best known ones. It was years in the making. And um, I urge you to, if you have Netflix, to go to Netflix because there's a wonderful movie about it. The depredations of the Cultural Revolution eventually led Sai to immigrate, first to Japan and then to the United States. But he took with him the idealism that led him to believe in a kind of art that could bring multitudes together. He continues to repeat today that the key element for him um, to universal convergence lies in the experience of art. Of course, he recognizes the utopianism of such thinking. He titled his 2008 retrospective at the Guggenheim Museum in New York, I Want to Believe. Not I believe, but I want to believe. For Sai, pursuing art is a passionate search and not a certainty. And it is not easy. It might be akin to climbing a fiery ladder whose rungs disappear once they are ignited. At art school in China, Sai studied traditional socialist realist painting. One of the characteristics of some socialist realism is that although its subject have, has great detail and it displays bold and accurate draftsmanship, it lacks the fire of realism. What do I mean by this? I mean the glow of aliveness. Note the careful all over brightness of this work. It's the, it's the light of a universal light, an even light shining on a blessed people. It is the light of no light. Works like this have easy to read content, but they are far from realistic. And as a note, interesting one, landscape painting uh, and work after nature during the Cultural Revolution um, were, was denounced uh, at the time of the Cultural Revolution and called, interestingly, black painting. In the catalog for the present exhibition at the Prado, Sai quotes a ninth century Chinese scholar who says that verisimilitude becomes realism only when it has what he calls spirit vitality. Keep this in mind because I think that this is the key to understanding Sai's work. So during his studies, he was also exposed in reproduction to impressionist paintings, and for the first time, he saw how light might be recreated on a canvas with paint. Works like Monet's Haystack and this wonderful work by Seurat that you can visit at the Museum of Modern Art don't describe nature in a realistic manner, but simulate an actual visual glow through color juxtapositions. Now, light creates color, and in a work like this by Seurat, color simulates light. But Kai was also exposed to El Greco. And it was through this artist, whose work you know so very well, that he first saw how light could make an image live, how light could make it magical, how light could make it chosen, and how light could make it sacred. Sai's early self-portraits contain, if timid, timidly, a quasi-expressionist, impressionist rather, brushstroke, and a kind of light that he was trying to imitate <clears throat> from El Greco. Of course, it's only, it was only a beginning. It's significant that Sai's first experiments with actual fire occurred in 1984, at the same time he was still making self-portraits and portraits, struggling with how to create the illusion of light. These first fire experiments, and this is a little later, but he started this kind of work in the late 1980s. I wanted to get a, a really big one to show you. So these first experiments used gunpowder applied in strokes on a thick paper. When lit and exploded, the gunpowder engraves the paper. <clears throat> gunpowder and explosions would become his signature medium. This play between the creation of actual light in the form of fire and the creation of the illusion of light from its results, that shadowy, smoky quality, characterizes the artist's work over the past 30 years. It's thought that we humans learned to tame fire two million years ago. By 500 BC, we had ingeniously figured out how to bring it into our dwellings through the invention of candles. 
further modifications like the invention of gas lighting in the 1790s and electric light soon thereafter banished darkness for us, for many of us in the world, not all of us, of course. Light is central to the myth of the origin of the first image, at least in the Western canon. How to depict it, and in contemporary times, how to recreate it, is a fundamental theme of European painting and a fundamental challenge for any artist. By the late 15th century, artists like El Greco began to understand that light was necessary to creating the illusion of three dimensions on a two-dimensional plane. One of the main things that fascinated Sai about El Greco was the way he could paint objects in their fullness. How did he do it? He did it through the juxtaposition of light and dark paint, creating shadows and thus the illusion of death, depth. This was Sai's first introduction to chiaroscuro, this Renaissance technique of depicting forms in light by using juxtapositions of dark and light, solid and shadow. Beginning in the 17th century, light in all its nuance, magic and metaphor flooded into European art, becoming the subject of some. In fact, illumination was a signature of the French painter Georges de Latour. It became the articulation of godliness, literally enlightenment. It became the indication of lifeblood. Rembrandt's figures famously glow like lanterns, as if the human soul was the light source that emanates from them. Light is the articulation of the wrath and wonder of nature, and at the same time, a spectacle of terror and of beauty. This extraordinary work evokes the sublime, the strange and, and exhilarating mixture of both emotions, that is, terror and beauty at the same time. Hard not to think, with cut with size enormous events that evoke both bombs and the wildest kind of abstract expressionism, that he is not interested in evoking the sublime as well. And I do think that this is one of, one of the goals of his work. Light is also an articulation of technical advancement, of ideas, giving another nuance to the meaning of enlightenment and uh, uh, conjuring for us, say, a comic book character with a light bulb coming out when she uh, has an idea. And here, in this canonical work by Edouard Manet, electric light is an indication of modernity and the modern condition of the brightly lit, all chiaro with very little scuro, of exposure, of everything out in the open. The tired barmaid on display, for example, is for purchase as much as the drinks she's proffering. So these are all depictions of light, not actual light. Just as some writers were done with poetry after the Holocaust and Hiroshima, some modern artists after the Second World War were done with illusion and bent on making a kind of realism of real things. They looked to make art that was actual, material, and non-metaphoric. In Italy, the Argentinian-born, Argentine-born Lucio Fontana made space by literally making a space. He sliced into the canvas with a knife to create a void that contains an absence of light, which is, surrounded by, which is surrounded by light like an envelope. So indeed, his evocation of light was its absence. The Los Angeles artist James Turrell is a sculptor of light, and in his large-scale in situ works, and this is a shot of a, um, a work from the Museum of Modern Arts collection that is in situ at MoMA PS1, our contemporary affiliate that I hope you will all visit in Queens, New York, next time you're in, in New York. Turrell captures light by surrounding it. It's the opposite of Lucio Fontana, in fact, but not a dissimilar um, uh, premise. But he is also literally a sculptor of light. He creates these um, installations and uh, light uh, objects using uh, electric light and oftentimes, uh, uh, oftentimes natural lights by creating these forms that, um, that sculpt the light. 
So for Terrell, light is an object. More recently, the Los Angeles painter Mary Weatherford has taken that Tyrellian idea, and in fact, I could say it's a Los Angeles idea, a place where the sun always shines, light is enormously important for um, contem modern and contemporary Los Angeles artists. Weatherford has taken this Tyrell idea and split it in two. Um, her light comes from the, the transparent colors she uses. She doesn't use oil paint, she uses something called flash, which is a, um, like gouache, gouache, but something that you can see through. There's the light, that's the first area of light. And the second is the actual light, the neon. This is a painting of a cityscape. It evokes evenings in a downtown honky-tonk using the actual objects of that downtown honky-tonk, that is neon, the signs that line the streets. Size work is a bridge between these two ways to depict light, between illusionism and actuality. In his project for the Prado, he intervenes in El Greco's paintings. He intervenes in the scenes like a time-traveling surprise guest, replacing the illusion of light with the reality of light and the reality of shadow. Where chiaroscuro happens, Kai sprinkles um, that area with gunpowder lights it and makes explosions. He captures in a way, he, he replaces in a way the illusionistic um, uh, uh, experience with the natural one. He creates a chiaroscuro found in nature. Looking at this work, we must add another painting term with origins in the Italian Renaissance, and that is sfumato literally smokiness. Kai replaces the illusion of smokiness with the reality, literally, of smoke. And what, he, what is left on the canvas is the imprint of the smoke, the soot. What it does to a work like the one on uh, your right is create the feeling of time. In Kai's work, in Sai's work, it is as if the savior is in the act of appearing or disappearing. When Sai first saw El Greco, he was fascinated by the miracle of how he created light. When he finally had the chance to visit the Prado in 2009 and see the El Grecos in person, he was moved, but he was also transformed. You might say he was struck enlightened. He saw his own peripatetic life going from China to Japan and settling in New York in El Greco's immigration from Crete to a sojourn in Venice and Rome and finally his triumphant years in Madrid and Toledo. In fact, he and his daughter retraced El Greco's journey when he was here. In this work on the right called Selfie, Sai replaces the image of Saint Sebastian with his own. Like all martyrs, Sebastian received enlightenment through pain and through sacrifice, through blood shed because of his beliefs. Sai depicts himself consumed in flames. In other words, um, he, he is suffering or working for his Beliefs in, belief in the transformative power of art. I might add also that he is replacing El Greco as much as he is replacing Saint Sebastian in a work like this. It's a measure of the artist's skill to be able to actually create light and to tame it. Gunpowder creates light as nature does, by combustion and by ignition. It's a challenge and a dare to the artist, not only to work after nature, but to work as nature. It's a bold assertion for the artist to even try to have powers of creation that might rival God, but almost every artist makes that decision. I've spoken of the light in Kai's Sai's work as illusionistic and actual, but I would like to end 
with a suggestion that above all, the light in Sai Guo Chong's explosive installations and his drawings and his paintings is fundamentally symbolic. The title of the Prada show, this homage to and collaboration with El Greco, is the spirit of painting. The moment of creation is akin to the moment of enlightenment, and both can be symbolized by a burst of light. Could it be that the light that El Greco and Sai conjure is a symbol of that spirit, that quality of aliveness, that godly mystery that is in every great work of art? I think it might be. In Sai's work, that light is as real as the burn marks on his canvas. That spirit, illustrated by El Greco's chiaroscuro, that brings his figures to life, shines out in Sai's paintings, touching that universalism that Sai has longed for for his entire career. Thank you.